my husband and I both studied film. We both wanted to make movies. We came to America, we got married. We both got jobs on movie sets. We both hated it. I had an actor throw a matchbox in my face. Tom had uh, his equally just horrendous experience. So we left that saying, okay, we can either let the dream die or we can have a different strategy. The different strategy was, well, hang on a minute. If we finance the movies ourselves, now we can basically control the art form and we can basically say, hey, you don't get to throw a matchbox in our face, right? So that was the goal. Cool, let's make enough money to be able to finance the movies so that we can have a great experience. And so that became the no bullshit. What would it actually take to earn enough money so that we can make our movies? And that idea was Tom had an offer with these entrepreneurs who had experience in building businesses. And they're like, come along with us. We'll teach you how to get rich. We'll build the company, a startup, a tech company, and it will take us a year, a year and a half. We'll sell it. We'll take the money from the sale of the company. We'll all make movies together. Now, the naivety of the beginner of being young, hungry, is like, cool, that sounds like a great idea. So when me and Tom sat down, And we said, no bullshit, what would it actually take to go in on this startup company? We together collectively started to talk about what that meant for our lives. And so Tom did actually- Was it really together? Yes. So I, a thousand percent. I, okay. I, I will for sure own that. So he was the one that said to me, he'd read this interview with um, Steve Jobs. And he said, look, if we, uh, Steve Jobs said that he doesn't take a second to establish what he's going to wear. And so that's why he always wears black shirts, black polo necks and jeans, because you can only make a certain amount of decisions in your life or in a day, I should say. So those ones that aren't meaningful, that aren't going to move a needle forward, let's not bother to do that. So I was like, great, this actually becomes a great plan. I'll stay at home because I also remember my belief system was that that was where I was going to end up anyway. So this is the collision between your belief system and then your idea of what life is going to look like. And what I told myself, I definitely believed it. What I told myself was it's only for 12 to to 18 months. And I was like, I can easily do this. If this means I'm going to make my dream come true with movie making, this is an easy no brainer to me. And so I was like, plus who wouldn't, this is like the dream life. I get to just chill. I get to walk around America. I get to, you know, go to the gym and hang out with friends. Like it seemed like you paint a great picture. And because it was all in service of a bigger goal, I was very excited. And so we went in and we said, cool, let's, this is going to be our plan. And for the first like six months, I was loving it. I was like, I know, you know, this is the dream come true. I didn't like the idea of feeling like I was a housewife because that wasn't the identity I told myself I was going to have growing up. So that's why I gave myself the title president of Billy Enterprises. But it's so interesting that, that, that you stepped into the role that everyone else predicted you would do for the rest of your life, knowing that that's not the, that, that, that you were almost you know, through college and university, what have you like rebelling against this, even every life step after that, not marrying a Greek dude, um, you know, like, like so many things you did to just like break that mold, yet you still found yourself in that very situation. Right. And this is the thing that, thank you for bringing this up. Cause this is the thing that scares me to death is that in that moment, in that moment where I decided, yes, I'm going to go into this identity for a year, a year and a half. Everyone's told me that, but I really did convince myself that I wasn't going to stay there. I convinced myself it was for the greater good. It's only for a year to 18 months. And that's my point. How many people find themselves in that position where they're like, oh, I can do this for a year. It's not going to be that bad. We convince ourselves that we can do it for a certain amount of time. It's not going to be that bad. And what ended up happening was uh, over time, My belief system of who I was going to be that was trained to me by my family ended up forcing me to, not even forcing me, but eliminated me questioning whether this was the life I actually wanted, right? So it becomes this, I'm in this perpetual motion of believing it's going to be for the greater good. How many people at home right now are saying they're going to do that for their family, right? I'm going to support my husband because it's just going to be for a year and a half. I'm going to support my wife. It's just going to be for this much, right? And so you sacrifice and that's what you do, right? As a couple, as a partnership, you do these sacrifices and that's okay. I'm not even saying that that's bad, but at what point do you assess that sacrifice and say, this sacrifice is no longer serving me? And that's what I didn't do. And I didn't ask myself that question because I slipped into the habit of the belief system that I was going to be a stay at home wife. And it stopped me from questioning. And that's the fear. That's the point of like, 
I was in purgatory of the mundane. My life didn't hit rock bottom. So I didn't, it didn't force me to question. I had a belief system that that's where I was going to end up in the, the end in a way. And I went in there with great intentions, but like so many, especially women, they'll say, To your point, Mark, I'm just going to do this for a certain amount of time. And then you end up pleasing people and you get the accolades for it. And then you get the pats on the back for it. So now in year two, in year three, when you start to question, hang on a minute, how the hell did I end up here? I literally said I was going to do this for 12 to 18 months. Why do we stay there? That's the the golden nugget, right? That's the question. Why do we stay there? It's because of all these things. It's because of a belief system we've been given. It's because we believe that we were just going to sacrifice for a short period is because we, we get the pats on the back and we get made feel good about, about doing this act. And so it becomes this whole messy situation that we find ourselves in that we end up so many people are like, hang on a minute, I freaking blinked. And now I'm not living a life I want. And I don't know how to get out. It is this accumulation of all these things that come together that then don't allow us the space to question to then get out of it. It's freaking messy as hell. It's you said terrifying. It is terrifying. Like doing the math, that was you from 23 to 31, right? Yes. If, if I'm so yeah. Do, how did you not or how, I mean the answer is probably growth mindset, but how do you not look back at that or or did you look back at that and go like I wasted my 20s? Like a thousand you're, percent. you're 31 not, not like quote unquote nothing to show for. Yeah. The business didn't go well. Tom was not happy despite how hard you worked. You were not fulfilled. You were not any closer to making any movies. Um, like now, Quest certainly changed the trajectory of your success story there. But but at that point in your life, I mean, you're 31, having waste quote unquote wasted your twenties. Yeah, yeah. And this was the part where do you play poker? No, I'm I'm so bad and too aggressive that I just lose all my money right away. <laughs> okay, but do you know the phrase pot committed? Yes. Okay. Where how many of us do this? We're like, well, I've spent a year on this, but I've spent two years on this. I can't let that all be a waste. Mm-hmm. And so what we'd rather do is walk down the wrong, keep walking down the wrong path because we don't want to admit that the time we've already spent has actually potentially been a quote unquote waste. And so we keep putting one foot in in front of the other. But then if we do that, at what point do we just pause? At what point do we stop going down the wrong freaking path? And for me, it was after year three, after year four, when Tom kept coming home and saying, babe, we just need another year, another you know year and a half to make the company worth the money that we needed to sell it. I kept saying, well, I've come this far. Well, I've done this much. I've already done three years. I've already done four years. I've already done five years. Like, honestly, Mark, I want to shake that Lisa awake and like punch <laughs> myself in the, pa- in, my, in the face because I'm just like, what kind of craziness is that? That I would rather spend more of my time unhappy than acknowledge I've spent the last six years of my life unhappy. But now that I recognize that I can make a change, it's so like crazy to me to think that but I used to think like that. Did you just not think, like think you deserved it or like or did, or there, there was no other option? There was no way no. out? You like... I think it becomes a really messy situation where you go, hang on a minute. I've told everybody, I've told everyone, this is what I'm doing. And now I can't show that I'm a failure. I can't show that this idea, this plan of building this tech company so that we can make movies. I can't show everyone that was failure because all these people that said that that was a crazy idea. Now that I'm going to say that they're right. And now that's a dent to my ego. That's a dent to my self-esteem. That kind of breaks apart my belief system. And now what if the next time I say I'm going to do something, well, everyone's going to be like, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Lisa, you said that last time and look where that ended up, right? And so you start to feel badly about yourself. You start to feel like going back to identity. What is that identity? And if you make a shift, is that going to affect you negatively or positively? And so I was like, I can make a shift and not being a stay at home wife anymore, but I get a lot of pats on the back. I get a lot of accolades. I get a lot of self-worth built up inside of me for being this great stay at home wife. And now what if I change? Where am I going to get all that from? How am I going to feel good about myself? So you know what, Lisa, even though the day to day really sucks, just keep going. And I did that for eight years because I didn't hit rock that rock bottom. And that rock bottom really is what I think is what jolts people into looking around and going, oh, How the hell did I end up here? You've got to hear the full conversation I had with Lisa Bill. You click on the link right over there to listen to the full talk.